Okay, so um, so right now I'll start talking about uh, the rendering dialog box. <clears throat> and again, you have your you know your quality options. Um, Draft, for example, is one. You also have this little uh, box that you can click right here called Region. This is uh, somewhat of a trade-off, just just so you uh, realize is, you know, I can go ahead and click Region. Right, my region's way out, so I need to zoom out to, in order to select it and drag it in. Uh, but but again, you, you, you have somewhat of a, a trade-off. You can click a small region and then have a higher quality of rendering, or you can, you know, um, render the entire image that you want and have a lower quality rendering and it'll happen about the same time. So um, a good a good way that that can be used, for example, is um, if you want to see how a specific material looks in a render, then maybe you can go ahead and, and get this uh, this region, bring it down just to that material and render it. That way it'll, it'll happen a lot faster and um, you'll, you'll be sitting around um, for a lot less time. <clears throat> so Something else that's really interesting, and let me make sure this works right. Let's see. So you can see as I'm moving this box up, um, wider and wider, um, the uncompressed image size goes up. So this is a way of, of somewhat kind of telling, you know, whether or not you're going to have a, a uh, it's going to take a long time to render or not. Again, if I were to go to the best rendering possible, um, oh. see, it already throws up on me. Uh, so, so yeah, so it, um, you, can, you can play around with that and, and, um, to find out what works best for you. <clears throat> so to keep going down, you have the uh, output settings, what you can do with output settings. Um, you can do the screen resolution or you can do it specifically to a, a printer for however many pixels you want. Um, you can actually, if, if I do choose printer, um, you have the, these, the DPI settings, so you can go to 600 if you would like to, but, um, but just so you know, you have that option to you if you would like. <clears throat> and, and that's something that you can actually play around with quite a bit. Now, now we'll start getting into lighting. The way lighting's uh, set up is there are some schemes that you can select. They're, um, they're grouped by either exterior or in interior views. Um, what we're going to be using today is just the exterior ones. Uh, we'll deal with uh, interior ones on Thursday. Um, exterior ones are a lot easier to deal with. The only ones that you um, really would want is the sun only. Um, I guess technically you could want to do an interior with artificial light only, um, but that might be something that you would see um, at night, for example, if you wanted a, a nice night shot of your building and how light from the inside would come out. Maybe if you have some, some floodlights on some architectural element and you want to show that off, um, that's a way to do it. Um, sun and artificial, I don't really see that ever being used, um, but you know that you know that you have it there. Again, sun only would, would be what you would primarily use. <clears throat> now here's a here's a sun. Uh, right now it sets sunlight from the top right, so it doesn't. What this does is it doesn't matter what what direction I'm looking at the building. It's always going to be from the top right, from from up here somewhere, right? Um, if you if I were to rotate this building around and look at the back side, the sun would still be at the top right. So it's not very realistic, right? Um, and, you know, that might be okay for some scenarios and might not be too well for others. Uh, for example, if um, this medical lab was uh, somewhat of a cookie-cutter medical lab and you know you were going to be placing 500 of these across the nation, you don't know anything about the orientation, where it's going to be located at. So it's not that big of a deal if you select, you know, the sunlight to be on the top right all the time. Not, it's not going to matter really, right? Um, however, if you know exactly where this building is going to be located, um, anywhere around the world, and you want to know what's going on with that light at a specific point in time, um, you, can, you can do that as well. So we'll, we'll get into some of these. So um, here's a few options. You can do summer solstice, uh, winter solstice. Um, and, you know, multi-day studies, you can do those as well. Multi-day studies is somewhat of a movie. Um, 
Um, I believe this is the way it works, but it's uh, it, you know, um, it's going to take quite a bit of time to render something like that because it is multi-day. So you you'll see you know the sun track and all that. So you won't actually see the sun, but you see the shadows. Uh, something else that's different from. 2000, uh, 2010 and the newer versions of Revit is um, right down on the view control bar, you'll have an option to show the sun in there, which is very, very useful. So you can actually, now that now that the sun is in your model, you can grab it and pull it around to different days of the year. Um, so it's another, another way of manipulating where the light's coming from. <laughs> But we don't have, we do, unfortunately, we don't have that in this, in this one right now. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is, um, is place this building in Palo Alto. So um, what I just did there is go to the uh, lightings section under sun. At the very bottom, we have um, edit and new. So I'll go ahead and click that. Um, and then I have uh, settings by date, time, and place. If I go ahead and click that, um, now what I'll have is a, 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 oh, I guess, okay. So now I have this. So right now I can either enter the latitude and longitude by my, uh, myself, or um, if the city's already in the database, go ahead and use that. If it's not, use the latitude and longitude. It works fine as well. Um, so I'm searching for Palo Alto. There it is. Okay. All right, so now, now we have our project is located in Palo Alto, which is great. Um, on the left-hand side of the sun and shadows uh, settings dialog box, um, you have three tabs, one still, one single day, and one multi-day. Uh, today we're going to probably be working with, uh, with stills. Um, and again, you know, you have the options of top right, top left, but we can also do the, center, the summer and winter solstice and uh, equinoxes. So um, you can pick whichever one you want. Let's just go for, um, I don't know, we'll go, we'll go for this. And as you can see, it actually gives a time of day that you want that. So that can be changed as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and pick spring. Or, no, let's pick a little one that's a little hard. Let's pick sun of solstice. All right. Um, and then 9 a.m., so you know it's going to be in the morning, right? Uh, okay, single day. All right, everything's good. So let's go ahead and run through this and see what happens. Uh, I'm going to take this off. Maybe a little bit better. And look, what's good about placing your project exactly where you want it, you know, you can you can see exactly where, where the shadows are going to lie in your your owner or your client's going to appreciate that. Um, they have a better idea of exactly what's, what it's going to look like inside and outside of your building. Um, there is, while, while this is running, there is this idea of um, Project North and True North. Um, typically, when you're building a model in Revit, uh, you're going to have it so that um, it's the walls are somewhat parallel to the, the coordinate system uh, um, North, south, east, and west. However, in reality, usually that's not the case, right? Your 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 site's on some weird angle um, to north, and your building usually is some weird angle to north. So, what we're going to do is talk about um, how to change that and um, and what's going and and how that affects your renders. Your renders are always going to use true north. So, whatever true north is in the project, that um, that's. That's how to base the sun path, right? Um, what we see here going on is, um, you know, the sun is obviously way out behind the building and is casting a shadow onto the building. We did do it in the morning, so you, you know, you can kind of, you can't see at this point, you can't see um, any horizon or anything, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, it gives you an idea of, um, you know, if, if this is casting a shadow, then really this is north in this direction, right? So let's let's actually check that out. Um, Okay, so... So when you save that rendering? Oh, that the image? Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if... Um, okay, so it's still up. This is good. So um, I close this out, but I can still go back and get the rendering dialog, and it's still somewhat saved. Um, I can come down here and see where it says display. I hit that. It'll say show rendering. 
and go back to the model and, and vice versa. If you want, there's a couple ways to, to save it. You can either export it to uh, an image file, a, a JPEG, or, or uh, a, a number of different um, image files, um, and that would be saved outside of the project, or you can save it within the project. Um, and what will happen is, um, actually it says here, save to project. When you do that, it goes, here, let's just, let's just go to this. Um, I'm going to go, uh, I'll just put test one just to show you what happens. Uh, now it's it's saved and you can access it through your project browser. So if you if you scroll down, you should see a heading for renders. There you go. And there's my test uh, test one. If I click that, there's my image. And you can now that allows you to uh, take this image and drag it into a sheet view as it, just like you would any other view. Okay. Um, and then let's go back. Let's go back to that three. Lost, uh, what was I going to do? Okay, so bef before I actually show you, you know, True North and, and uh, Project North and what's going on there, um, I still want to show you a few more options that you actually have. For example, the background. Um, you can do few clouds, you can do no clouds, you can do uh, very cloudy, you can actually do it as a color um, for the background. Right now, we can't see a background in the rendering that we've produced. The reason why is it's the it's the default 3D view that you would typically rotate. If you want to see a background, um, you know, clouds in the in the sky, uh, in the horizon, what you need to do is um, use a camera view or a perspective view in order to do that. So, um, Glenn was nice enough to already create a bunch of perspective views. So I'm just going to go ahead and use one of these to show you what I'm what I mean. So if I, if I were to render this, um, yeah, that's all, that's all fine. Actually, let's, no, let's do this. So a few clouds is OK. You can also change whether or not um, it's hazy or clear outside. Um, and yeah, let me, let me go ahead and render that. So, um, so while this is rendering, um, just so just so you know, the background right now you have these options of either clear sky, um, very cloudy, less cloudy, uh, you know, these sort of options. Um, in the new versions of Revit, you can actually import an image file for your background. So, if you have some really cool sunset or whatever, you can place that in there. Um, where, where it really gets um, where it's really useful. Um, I think and powerful is if you have uh, an interior rendering um, and you want to see what type of views you would see looking outside of a window, then that's that's a perfect place to do that. You can you can essentially you know if you're building a uh, a beach home, um, you can essentially go out to that beach, take a picture of the beach, and put it into your render. So. All right, so you can you definitely can see a horizon right here. You can see uh, some clouds in the background. Uh, right now, it looks a little dark, right? So um, how do you fix that? And so you can, one thing you can do is you can swing the sun around to the other side, right? That, that'll lighten things up, possibly. But you can also um, have the option of a cha changing the exposure of, of your rendering, uh, which is very, very useful. Uh, when you're using this tool, um, and I suggest you use it, uh, definitely, is when you're changing these settings, change them at small increments because if you, if you don't, um, you'll get a dramatic result. And I'll, I'll show you why. I, be, I barely, okay. So I move that maybe three quarters of the way down. If I press apply, I got, it's way overexposed, right? So that just gives you an idea of how touchy these, these settings are. So it's, it's obviously way too exposed. And there's also, you know, you can change the highlights, uh, which are just basically the, the really bright colors. You can make them make them a little darker. Now my now my uh, clouds are starting to appear in the background. Uh, mid tones, shadows are basically the dark, the very dark, uh, the dark areas. You can make them darker or lighter. 
uh, just a variety of things. And then you have uh, white point. I'm not necessarily sure what white point is, but I can show you what it looks like. Um, it just it kind of kind of changes the color, almost similar to saturation. Uh, just like your you know, old LTV screens, you make the, those colors really uh, intense or less intense, however you would like. So that's, I would say that's really useful because, you know, if, if, if your render isn't light enough, you know, you can change in the exposure and it's, it's easy enough. Um, also, and I, I might be wrong about this, but once you save the project and you don't go back to the same rendering screen, um, you can't change it again. So you can't, I mean, you can't go to, you can't go to your, um, your uh, project browser list, pick the render, and then change it from there. So you can, just, just so you know that. Okay. Um, what else can I say about that? Yeah, so, so that's renders. Okay, so the last thing I want to get into is, uh, well, well, before I do that, I want to show you um, how to set your true north at, um, versus your project north. And the way you do that is, um, I would also, I would always recommend if you're rotating something, um, go to a plan view, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, everyone's different, you, you might be comfortable with rotating stuff in, in, uh, in a 3D view. Uh, I definitely like to go to plan view. <clears throat> okay, so if you go to view graphics, um, a number of ways to get there, I'll just do this one. View, uh, not view graphics, view properties. What, one of the parameters that you have is um, right here, orientation, right? So you have an option of going project north or true north. From, from some of the, some, one of the earlier renderings that we did, we noticed that, um, that the sun is actually coming from, um, in the morning, the sun was coming from the top of this building. So really, the, the left of this building um, is true north, right? Um, and you can see that right now it's set to project north so if i go and i change it to true north you should see the building rotate there you go so it's rotated uh, it looks a little funny right now because the crop was on so if i turn that crop off you can see the rest of the building and you should there you go all right so this is the the true orientation uh, of this building all right, and the way you change that is if you go to manage, and there, there is, let me make sure I get this right, position, yeah, position, you have the option of uh, relocate project, uh, rotate to true north, so let's, let's do rotate true north, All right, so right now, right now this is true north, I'm going to rotate it just a little bit just to show you what happens. So, so there you go. Now, now at this point, up is true north. If I wanted to, wait, let me make sure that's right. Yeah, yeah, true north. So again, if I go back to project north, it should go right back to the same view that we had before. It's not cropped now because I turned that off, but it should go back to the same view. So again, when you're doing uh, any renderings in the sun position is always based on true north. And you can change that if you need to. All right, um, all right so now we'll go ahead and uh, get into uh, content, um, adding content to your renders. Um, adding content is definitely a good idea. Um, what it does is it provides um, it provides scale for your client to see. So, you know, if you have a building, 
if you just have a building with nothing else around it, um, it can be a little boring, boring especially for a rendering. So uh, put some people in there, put some plants. It really puts things in perspective. Um, and the clients, you know, the client will really like it. And you can you can also gear it towards a client. You know, um, uh, an example we'll go through is you know picking some really fancy car if you you know your client's going to like some really fancy car, right? Um, put that into the parking lot. So right now, um, this is, right now we're in the uh, first floor plan view. Um, as you may have noticed on some of the renders that we already created, there, there was already some people and some uh, plants that were placed uh, in, the, in the project. However, this view does not show them. Um, and, you know, it's a first floor plan view, so Glenn didn't want to get it uh, get it um, too clustered with plants and stuff. You just wanted to show the building. But um, what we can do is go ahead and turn those turn those on. And what I just did is press BG for visibility graphics. Um, you can see how Entourage is, is uh, clicked off for its visibility. Um, also, right here, plants. That's also clicked off. I'm going to click, click parking just because I don't know what's, what's in there right now. Uh, if I press OK, then I should see some things pop up. Uh, one thing that popped up is now you see some of these larger trees. You see some bushes that we have here. Um, you also see a person. So this is this is what this is. Yeah, doesn't look like a person, but this is what a person looks like from, from the top view. Um, one thing that's really interesting is you see the little triangle of this person. Uh, it's pointing in the direction that this person would be looking at. Um, these these people are called. Um, Tejan might be helping me with this, like PRC, is that right? RPC, which is photorealistic content. content. And what that does is um, you can take a rendering from any angle um, and it'll render it correctly. It'll make it look like an actual person. So if you render it looking in this direction, um, you would see the, the back of the person's head and, and you know, so um, this is some, some of this content can definitely, um, you can find online. Um, the Revit library does have some of it already in, um, within within the library that, that it comes with, but there's tons of material offline. I know Revit City is a big one. Um, I, I don't know if you know any others that are really big, but there's... Yeah, go, Google online, you can find tons of different people. Um, they even have like pay sites that you go and, you you know, some of the larger companies will pay a lot of money for people. So. magazines but I, I mean as far as a you know projects that go to owners I've seen people in those definitely uh, very very often okay. so what, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is now I went ahead and went to the second floor plan uh, this um, as I mentioned earlier this tiled area is is a balcony um, however I don't know if my owner knows it's a balcony so I'm gonna go ahead and start sticking some people in there just to you know just just so that when I produce a rendering, there's going to be someone up there and the owner will know that's a balcony. So to do that, um, you can go to home and um, some of this additional content is, in, is a, actually a component. So I'll go ahead and place components. There might, there's right now Jay, as far as, there's only one person in there and it's Jay. So I, I want to go ahead and add some more people. I think Jay's getting a little lonely there, so. Um, so we'll go to load families. Okay, so I believe it's entourage. All right, and then we have RPC female and RPC male. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, select both of these uh, and bring them both in. All right. 
Alright, so now we have our, our, our RCP female and our RCP male uh, components in here. And again, we have a variety of different people to choose from. So um, let's, let's go ahead and bring Cynthia into the project. Um, and I'm just going to place her somewhere around here. Right. Um, once I place, once I place the first time, I can I can rotate automatically, and I'm just gonna have Cynthia uh, look towards the entrance somehow. Um, okay, that was a little too much. So um, I again I use a lot of hotkeys, so I just press uh, R O to rotate. Oh, that's good enough. All right, so. Let's give Cynthia a friend to talk to. Um, let's go. F let's go for uh, Laron. We'll put him in. Come on. All right, that didn't work. All right, what I what I just did there is I had I had Cynthia selected, and then I went and selected Laron. And what happens? I changed Cynthia to Laron. So so what I have to do now to bring Cynthia back in is to just uh, go ahead and put a new component in. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to rotate her around so at least they look like they're having somewhat of a conversation. Okay, so we place some people in there. That's not all we can put in there. We can put trees. We've already put some trees in there, but um, if I go back to um, the first floor, uh, I'm, what I want to do is go ahead and place, place a car in here. It'd look really nice. Um, so I'll go to components, place component. So uh, I believe we don't have any loaded in the project now, so we can load some in. One place you can get them is typically on, Entourage. Uh, some options that you have to you right now are van, uh, semi-van, uh, semi-truck, um, and the Beetle is probably the coolest one that they have, but um, they're not cool enough, so let's go find something better. So this is another reason why I would definitely hold on to Glenn's uh, library because there's a lot of uh, useful components in there. So I'll go to, I think it's, I think it's uh, additions, yep, then library, then he has them under site work, and then here we have vehicles, and here's a slew of other vehicles, we have the, the old school uh, VW Beetle, we have a Viper, same van, Land Cruiser, Supra, the definitely Porsche, so there's, there's a lot of options here. Um, I'm just gonna bring in a couple that I that I like. Sure. Um, okay. So let's wait for this to. Okay. So load family, and if you go to the K drive, yeah, it's really confusing. Uh, once you get to the K drive, um, you're gonna go to uh, Revit, the Revit libraries. Then to CDE 110 Editions, CDE 110 Library, very confusing. Again. And then um, all the all the entourage stuff is located under Site Work. And here you have you know a variety of things. You have different plants um, that that he that he has. Sports, I've never even really looked at this one yet, but it's like uh, quartz, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, and then and then vehicles is also an option that you have there. Okay, so right now I have my, my Porsche selected and I want to go ahead and drop him in here. I don't know why I can't see him, but let me go to my 3D view. Maybe I can see him in there. There 
Okay, go on. So I'll just, I'll just go ahead and place them in there. Yeah, you know those Porsche owners, they like to double park, so we'll... <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and render this. Actually, let's, try, let's go ahead and bring in a, um, a tree, and then we'll render it so you can see them all at once. Uh, I think we might actually already have a tree in here. Oh, we have to, yeah. Okay. So I definitely want to show you how... Okay, why didn't that work? Okay, so um, so right now I have a tree. One, one interesting thing about trees is, um, like, right now I can place it wherever I want to. You know, that's, that's fine and dandy. Um, what I can do is come here and let's uh, go to type properties and I can, um, one thing I can do is I can edit the height of that tree which is really useful. Um, right now, um, and I'm not sure why this happened, but it's, uh, it's labeled as a 25 foot high tree, but the height is 50. So someone didn't duplicate or something happened where it didn't, it didn't get duplicated over and then renamed correctly. Um, but regardless, this is where, this is where you can change that. Uh, something else is really interesting is the, um, the render appearance. This is where um, you define what type of tree it is. So you have a, a slew of different options here. Um, Douglas fir, you can do the fall time, you can do the summer time, so you can actually get some of those um, those oranges if you wanted if you wanted to do a fall scene. Um, but this is this is where you would actually do that. So just so you know, it's a, it's available to you to change a lot of these things around. So I'm just going to drop drop one of those guys in there. Yeah. And then let's let's go ahead and render this. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, I'm button. I'm gonna go ahead and do the medium real quick just to get that going. So one of the coolest things you can look at is it has walkthroughs. Basically, you can walk through a building. So it's like a video of going through your building. You can open doors and chairs as you can go around. Wow. Yeah. People get so entangled in that, they start rendering walkthroughs. And it can take up to three to four days just to have your camera move from one point outside the building to another point outside. Yeah. And, and you gotta, you got to think, it's a walkthrough is essentially a movie, right? So it has frames associated with it. Each frame gets rendered. It has to be rendered like this. So It could take days. So you might want to plan ahead. If you want to submit on Thursday and you want to walk through render, you want to start on Sunday before. Yeah, yeah. And just in case. And it could go wrong, right? And in the end of it, it could go from it could go up, it could lose power, something could happen. Just what? Yeah, so there's one more thing that I, I think I, I I missed as far as creating um, um, creating unique uh, rendered appearances. So I'm going to go back and go over that really quickly. I know we don't have very much time, um, but uh, let's let let's set this run through and finish up. It shouldn't take too long. The right. We're going to play. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> you just have to sign the door. Yeah, wait, you know. The cars are made of clay. Yeah. All right. So you can see you can see this person was already placed in there. Um, we have I can't remember Cynthia. This is Cynthia right here, and this is uh, Lorana, I believe, is who that was. But um, you know, it's it turns out pretty pretty well. She's actually sitting down, so that's not the right person to put in. <laughs> So there you go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I do want to show you one last thing that I missed and I think is important. <clears throat> okay, so um, what I'm going to do real quickly is to show you how to create your own render appearance. And you can do this by um, going out and taking a picture of any texture that you want. Say, for example, um, you were modeling this building in particular and you wanted to get the uh, the facade, I think it's the, the brick 
facade for this building, you want it to get exact. So you can actually go out there, uh, get a straight on shot of the facade itself, bring it into Revit, and, and make sure that it, the render appearance works out well. So um, I'll go ahead and quickly go through that for you. Um, so what you would do is uh, get to the materials dialog box. Um, and then just because I've already created uh, Stucco 2, I'm going to go ahead and change the render appearance for that one. So I'll go to render appearance, <clears throat> replace. Okay, sorry, wrong, wrong place. Okay, right down here. Uh, it gives you an option to, to have an image file. So this is where you would actually select here and, it, and bring in whatever image file that you would want to put in. So uh, let's see, I'm going to go, I'm going to go again, I'm going to go to the K drive and use some of uh, Glenn's, Glenn's stuff. Material textures. So essentially, you can bring any file that you want in. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pick this crazy looking one. I definitely like the way it looks. So once I've brought the image file in, um, one thing you can do is the sample, the sample uh, width. Okay, so I can make this, you know, I can make this two inches, and these would be little sand beads or whatever, or I can make these really big boulders. So it depends on whatever you want for your project. Uh, I think that should be a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to go ahead and select six, uh, select, uh, six feet wide. Again, you can rotate it so that it, it comes sideways if you need to. Um, and some other examples, yeah, that's about it that we have right now. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. And since I already had a wall that had that material associated with it, it should change, it should change automatically. One thing that hasn't changed is the way it looks now, but if I were to render this, and I'm going to go ahead and do that really quickly uh, at a low you should be able to see, you should be able to see those, uh, those stones in the wall. So, um, yeah, I think we're officially out of time, so uh, thank you very much.